All right, what's going on, guys? So, just got some uh, pickups here, and mostly Nintendo stuff and a few uh, PlayStation things. Um, several of these items are actually uh, birthday gifts. I celebrated my birthday over the weekend, so thanks to those of you who commented um, and who, uh, uh, you know, sent me birthday wishes on, you know, different mediums, Facebook, YouTube, wherever. Um, so, I do thank you guys for those. And uh, let's see what I got here. Um, so, let's just start with uh, some of the PlayStation stuff. Um, I picked up a copy, and I, I don't know if, I might have mentioned this, some of you guys might have seen this on my, my Facebook stuff, uh, but I don't think I've shown you guys here on YouTube yet, uh, but I have gotten into the Kingsfield series. Um, this is ASCII Entertainment and From Software's early, early concept that evolved into, um, uh, the Dark Souls, Demon Souls, and while this is actually uh, Art Kingsfield for the PlayStation, is actually Kingsfield 2, the first one came out in uh, Japan, actually it was one of the, I believe, I don't know if it was one of the launch titles, I believe it might have been though, I think it came out in December of 95, uh, but yeah, very interesting game, if you like the Dark Souls series, um, if you like an open, you know, an open-ended world where you have swords, magic, uh, and extremely tough enemies and unlimited amounts of everything. Um, definitely check these out. You're not going to get much graphic-wise. This game here is almost 20 years old, so um, while uh, you know it definitely is gritty, it's a lot of fun. My buddy, uh, so my buddy Matthew uh, Gurley up at. Um, who I met up at uh, Game Trader and through the St. Louis uh, Gaming Group. He was the one who kind of showed me this game, and uh, when he saw my interest in it, he actually had uh, procured a copy of Kingsville 2 for me. So this is the second uh, release that we got here in America. And yeah, it's a little more evolution of concepts and ideas. So definitely, you know, another good one to go with. I popped this in. I've checked it out a little bit, but I'm actually going to beat the first Kingfield uh, first. So um, yeah, that was an awesome birthday present, and uh, it's nice to start getting uh, video games for birthday presents. Uh, you know, it's been since I was a kid that I really haven't gotten any, so it's nice to get some of those now. I picked up a game called ODT. Yeah, I'm just kind of on a PlayStation kick right now. I've played this a little bit, but um, I'll sit down with this one a little later and check it out. It looks kind of fun. Uh, it is by uh, Cygnosis, and as uh, I might have mentioned before, Cygnosis, uh, they were one of the pioneers contracted, and you know, this is stuff I found out through my readings here of some, you know, of the recent books like Council Wars, but Cygnosis, they were uh, contacted by Sony um, give them like 48 million dollars and they were one of the first companies that like uh, led the train of programmers for the PS1 making it into what it is today so I am interested in Cygnosis and the games that they put out uh, in the early PlayStation years to me that they're pretty significant games but you know that's just my opinion but an angle that I'm approaching for collecting the PS1 because I do want a nice PS1 library but a lot of it's just personal interest at this point uh, just like this game, Armored Core. Just seeing what else uh, ASCII and From Software was up to at that time. I do not have a PlayStation 2 or a way to play PlayStation 2 games, but I did pick up Eternal Ring. Once again, that's a it's From Software and ASCII. And, uh, you know, just another of their type of uh, adventure game. And just extremely hard uh, first person combat. Uh, so one day, I'll, one day I'll play that one. All right, so I've got two manuals here. Uh, my buddy Chris got me a, found me a copy of Castlevania II for the Game Boy. Got a needle picture of Dracula on the back there. I traded him, what did I trade for him? A couple of NES games. I think um, Adventures of Lolo, I believe, or um, Bump and Jump. I don't remember what it was, but I traded, I traded him a, you know, a decent game for this. All right. Uh, and then some trades, another trade uh, with my buddy Alex. I traded him my Joe and Mac manual and uh, for the Castilian manual. He needed the Joe and Mac, I believe, to upgrade his uh, box and game. Uh, and, you know, I just, I didn't really need it, so I would rather him see him complete a uh, CIB Game Boy game. You know, 
has less than 100, I believe, like 80 or 90. This game and manual is very hard to find. You see the German version of this everywhere, but you do not see uh, the U.S. version hardly anywhere. I picked this up at V-Stock a few weeks ago. I don't know if you can see it there, but there are some key differences. And when you look online, you'll see if you compare what this one looks like here to everyone on uh, eBay, you'll see that everyone on eBay is the German one. And the German one uh, is significantly more common. Uh, the, it has like a square square symbol or something down here in the bottom, I believe. But uh, you will not find a copy of the of this on eBay or Amazon. You'd probably best bet is to just find somebody who has one, because you know these things are just they're so uncommon. And the thing is, a lot of game stores, a lot of collectors, they I, I'm sure there's people who have a lot of copies of these because. People just don't know the value of these, really. They're just so up in the air, and and in all reality, these could be like you know the become like the more valuable stuff in the future because they're so rare. But that being said, people may have big stores and stockpiles of these, and though that's never good for the you know the constant value uh, of a game. So, but yeah, you know, if anybody wants to get uh, Castilian, I would definitely keep your eyes out for it because while it's not very expensive, like I said, it's just extremely hard to find the U.S. copy, the NTSC copy. So, yeah, all right. Um, so, I one more uh, game I got here, and that's um, can't really open it. I put a new case on there, but I did pick up a copy of Kid Dracula. I paid a little bit over 50 bucks for this. Just wanted to knock it out. The bids on this are ending. Any, sometimes you'll find it, buy it now for like uh, 60 bucks or so. Um, if you keep your searches, don't randomly... I, I only look at maybe five or six games a week on YouTube. It's particular items. I never search YouTube or eBay. I said YouTube, eBay uh, with my main account. I never search for random things that I'm not going to buy. I have a separate um, account for that. But so that way I often get coupons for like, you know, 8% off, 10% off the items I've been looking at. So literally this popped up. Um, I mean, the game must have been only up for, you know, a day or so. Uh, but it did take about 8% off of the total. So I, once again, I was able to apply that. And I get, I've gotten a lot of discounts on eBay before. I got a to, just a plain $20 off coupon one day. $20 off any item uh, redemption code. So yeah, so Kid Dracula, this actually completes my Castlevania collection for the Game Boy. I've got the um, Adventure, Belmont's Revenge, Legends, and now Kid Dracula. Alrighty, and then for the NES games I got, this, um, the first one, this was actually a birthday gift from my boss, uh, Charlie at the game store, um, that's Hudson's Adventure Island CIB, this is just a really, you know, really cherished childhood game of mine, really, really like this game a lot, do I play it often, no, not really, but I, I really enjoy the artwork and having it displayed in my collection, so, uh, yeah, thanks for that, that's awesome. And then just a few other NES games I got. I don't think I showed this one, but I did get uh, for my buddy Chris, who I got the Belmonts from. Um, I did get an NFL that I, you know, the same one I always got confused with NBA or MLB. So yeah, um, better label. I did get this a few weeks ago, so this is just a label upgrade. Picked up a copy of Jimmy Connors Tennis. I paid for this what I would have paid for the CIB last Christmas when I was looking for it. So. And, you know, I'm not too upset. I've only got a handful of games left for the NES. I can count them on two hands. Uh, so, whatever. And then I got a copy of Dragon Warrior 2, finally. So, got to get Dragon Warrior 2 out of the way. Dragon Warrior 2 and 3 were just, and 4 were games I'd saved until the end. Um, just really wasn't ever in a hurry to pick them up. And, uh, you know, the price of them to me... It, it, it would seem that those games, since they have always held a price for so long, there's a good chance, you know, that the value of that, you know, will always stay the same, if not just go down one day. So, yeah, well, that's it for now. I do have a few other games to show you guys, but um, I'm going to save that for next time. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a bit.